What is happening, legalizers? It's me, cannabis lawyer Tom Howard, here with an update about what it shocked me, you know, what I believe to be the worst lottery so for social equity that I've seen in at least three years. So easy to hack, and it's out of Minnesota. Let's dive in. Very often we discuss social equity and fairness and trying to make sure everybody has the same shot to win. That did not happen in Minnesota this year. If you're rich, get at us over at CannabisIndustryLawyer.com and we can help you win all of the licenses. Let's dive in and go to the documents released by the Office of Cannabis Management out of Minnesota. And here's the stuff that they do because over 5,000 social equity hopefuls went through the portal in Minnesota. It was very easy to qualify as social equity. Basically, one in three Americans do. And then they get a million questions from these social equity hopefuls, so much so that they create an FAQ of frequently asked questions. And some of them is on here. Let me go into some of them that are pretty interesting. For example, the 65% ownership requirement applied to governance or financial interest. And let me zoom in a little bit on this as it's quite small language. So there it, the statutory use of ownership control includes both financial and governance control. The statutory requirement is 65% controlling interest be controlled by persons verified by social equity applicants to create social equity applicants access to capital not held by traditional banks. True. The legislature also created a true party of interest section to help pervert the use of straw applicants to subvert Minnesota's commitment to an equitable market. And then they couch that policy goal they defined. Corporate structures can be complex and the office can provide a comprehensive list of structures that would meet the standards in the statute. Applicants should note that the complexity and nuance of corporate structures may increase the chances of a lengthy review or regulatory challenges. To that end, being approached by an investor offering a complex ownership structure or debt structure as part of the investment may be a red flag for predatory practices. Here we have what happened uh, this past spring. Minnesota changed their law and they changed it to create new things. They made a lottery. They updated the social equity. They created something called a true party of interest, which becomes almost as superfluous as your appendix. And then here, let's drill into what they said they were trying to make this about. So it was to strengthen social equity positions, and they're going to lower it from 100% ownership to 65% ownership. And of course, they will not allow for any capital contribution of the social equity applicant for the license itself. The change includes provisions to protect chapter 342, that's the chapter for cannabis legislation in the state of Minnesota, of a fair marketplace through verification tools for fair ownership, limitations on fraudulent actions and gamesmanship, and strengthening standards for license holders. It all sounds very well and good. And if we go to this particular aspect of it, then they provided these instructions and this guide for the social equity lottery that's going on right now. And they have uh, grounds for denial. It's right there on page three. And here's where they begin telegraphing you, the wealthy person tuning in, thumbs up, likes and subscribes, get at us over at CannabisIndustryLawyer.com because dude, wealthy people can just buy this license. Like, okay, so all applicants associated with the same TPI, true party of interest, of more than 10% ownership within the same license type will be disqualified. So provided that you create a two member LLC and the rich guy has 9% and the broke social equity guy has 91% and you create the operating agreement to provide that no new members are allowed in without rights of first refusal. And also the rich guy says, I'm not going to loan you any money after you have won unless you sign this assignment of your membership interest to collateralize my promissory note. Now, very often you're not allowed to do this in my state, but in Minnesota, because they rushed it, all their SEAs, their social equity applicants are probably gonna get. And so here's what's gonna happen. They will want an assignment or some type of security collateralization for a loan that they don't even really have to make yet. Uh, and then, they will apply 11 billion times. Uh, now, we look into the actual laws itself. Let me share this. So let's look into the actual laws itself. 
Here it is. This is the new thing they added to protect social equity applicants, the true party of interest. Definitions, as used in this section, control, financial institution, which basically means a bank, financier. Now, this one, again, remember, pay attention to that and. That means you must be all three of these things. Otherwise, you do not count as a financier. True party of interest, here's the problem with that. Uh, it says means an individual who is, and then of course, a member of a limited liability company. Oh, darn it. So you just can't be a 9% member and then collateralize their 91% with an assignment or some type of share restriction agreement. Uh, granted, membership units aren't shares, but it's essentially the same thing. Uh, and then uh, push it all onto the wealthy person after the uh, victory uh, in the lottery. However, Go down here, sub two, applicant number limitations. An individual may not be a TBI, true body of interest, for more than one application for any single license type or two multiple license types that the individual will be prohibited from holding licenses under and then cite to another section. Here is the, like, you can drive a dump truck through this exception. Why do you fucking put this in the law when the exception is that big, you know? When I see stuff like this and the application window is a minute and a half, it's three weeks and it was all snuck in there by wealthy people in Minnesota that want to screw you, the hopeful social equity applicant. Uh, we aren't doing this type of stuff. Minimal services going on right now in Minnesota for us. We have some templates. They might be worthless by the time you're watching this. This might not end the way you think it will. This will probably end with all the rich people owning the licenses in Minnesota and all the social equity people getting run over. When you see laws like this, these are bad laws. Like you, Why do you have an exception that swallows the rule? Why did you even make the rule? These are the types of things that we talked about on Sundays at the podcast, Cannabis Legalization Knows. If you want to tune in, we'd be happy to have you. See you at the next one.